In today's video, I'm going to cover how to set up a NAS to NAS backup, and then we'll talk about how to prepare that NAS to be taken off site. So if this is something you're interested in, then I suggest you stick around. Okay, so to get started, I'm signed into both of my Synology devices. This is the DS216 Plus 2, and you can identify it by the desktop pattern. And this is the DS920 Plus, and I've changed the desktop pattern to just a solid blue so we can differentiate between this being the source NAS and this being the target NAS. Now that we've said that, the first thing we need to do is make sure we have a program called Hyper Backup Vault running on the target NAS. So if you don't have that installed, what we need to do is go over to the package center. And then we're just going to type hyper backup. And you can see it says hyper backup, which is installed. But what we want is hyper backup vault, which is this program right here. So we're going to click on the install button and wait for the installation process to complete. Now that it's installed, let's go ahead and open Hyper Backup Vault. And you can see here under Overview, we don't have any backup targets created yet, and that's fine. That's all we have to do as far as getting the program installed. One other important thing to do on the target NAS is to create a folder for your backup destination. Now, I'm not going to cover how to do that, but I've already created one here in the file station, and I've called it Offsite Backup. You can call it whatever you wish. That said, now let's switch over to the source NAS and we're going to go into the package center. And what you want to do here is install the program called Hyper Backup. Now, I already have Hyper Backup installed. You can see it here. But if you don't have it installed, what you would do is just search for it like you did on the target NAS. You would type in Hyper Backup. And when it comes up, you would just click the install button. But we're going to go ahead and open it for now since we already have it installed. And we're going to create a new backup task. So we're going to do that by clicking the blue plus button, the create button. And we're going to create a data backup task. And now you can see here, we're presented with a whole bunch of different backup destinations. You can go to Synology C2 storage, to a local folder. You can go out to Dropbox, Google Drive, and other cloud-based services. But what we're going to focus on today is selecting remote NAS device. So let's click on that and hit next. On this screen, we're going to create our backup destination settings. So now what I could do here is if I know the IP address of the backup NAS, I can enter it here. But if it's on the local network, which I recommend the first time you do a backup, you do it on the local network before moving the target NAS off site, just simply click on the drop down arrow and it will search for other Synology NAS devices on your local network. And you can see here it found two other devices. It found the DS920, which is the one I want to use as my target. It also found my 1621 Plus. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the DS920. Now here we have the option of using encryption during the transfer process. I would say initially to leave it off for the first backup. And then once the first backup is done, go back in and edit it and turn encryption on before you move the target NAS off site. But for now, let's just turn it on. And it says certificate authentication not verified yet. So we're going to tell it to trust. We're going to leave the port information the same and we're going to go ahead now and click on login. And now we have to log into the target NAS. Now that we're successfully logged in, let's go ahead and select the shared folder. This is the folder that I suggested you create as the destination for your backups. And there it is, offsite backup. Again, that'll be the folder that you create with the name that you had given it. Under the directory, I'm just going to call this offsite backup. And we're going to click on next. Now we're presented with the screen to choose the source information that we want to back up to the target NAS. So for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to pick a small folder that I know has very little information in it so that the backup process completes quickly. 
So let's go into my desktop and I'm just going to select will and trust and go ahead and click next. On this screen, we can pick the applications and back up the settings of that particular package or packages, but we're just going to not select anything right now and go ahead and click on next. And now we're going to configure our backup settings. So I'm going to give the task a name and I'm going to call it offsite backup. I'm going to enable the task notification. I'm going to compress the backup data. We're going to go with a backup schedule for now. I'm just going to leave the daily backup at 3 a.m. That's perfect. We're going to make sure that we leave enable integrity check schedule on, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to click on next. Next, we can set up rotation settings. Now for the purpose of this video, I'm not going to do this, but just know that you can set it up so that it deletes the earliest versions, or you can have it smart recycle, or you could set up a customized retention, and then you can also select the maximum number of kept versions. But again, we're just going to leave this disabled for now, and we're going to go ahead and click on done. And it's asking us now if we'd like to back up. So let's go ahead and do the initial backup. And you can see here it's waiting. And if we go over to the target NAS, we should see some information up here. Yep, there we go. Offsite backup. And you can see that it's starting the process. And because it was such a small folder, the backup task has been completed. Okay, so now that we have the backup task created, it's time to talk about the considerations for taking the target NAS off site. So that said, we're back here on the source NAS. And if I click on this drop down menu here and click on edit, let's go over to the target tab. And if you remember when we set this up earlier during the creation of the backup task, we had the source NAS go out and search the network for any target NAS devices that were available and it found the DS920. So what we need to do now is change this local information to whatever the information is going to be for the NAS when it's off site. So that could be done a couple of different ways, right? That could be done using the quick connect ID that could be done using dynamic DNS. And by the way, both of these options require port forwarding on your router. Now, if you don't know how to port forward on your router, you can Google your router model and there should be information out there to help you with that. However, you could also use a VPN. And in my case, I'm going to be using a site to site VPN. Now I've done videos on how to remotely connect to your Synology NAS. I've done videos on port forwarding. I've done videos on dynamic DNS. So if you're interested in any of that, go back and search my channel. I'll also put the links to those videos down in the video description below. So for my case, really all I have to do is change this information to be the IP address that I'm going to assign the target NAS once it's in the offsite location. And then I should be good to go. The backup task should work perfectly fine. So there you have a simple process of setting up a NAS to NAS backup and then taking it off site if you so wish. Let me know what you guys are doing as far as how you're backing up your NAS. Let me know down in the comments below. If you like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Be sure to check out some of the other videos that I have listed here up above. Please remember subscribe, like, and share this video. And I want to thank you as I do in every video for using my Amazon affiliate links. I know they don't change your price, but they do help out the channel. And if you'd like to support the channel in other ways, I do have links to my Patreon and PayPal down in the video description. And as of late, you can also now buy me a coffee link down below as well. Once again, my name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions. As always, please stay safe. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.